Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning back into Help for HGTV. Today, we have Davin back on with us, and we are going to start our conversation today about long-term care, which so many people have so many questions about. So I actually think, Davin, if you could just jump right in and tell us what is long-term care and pros and cons, and just give us the whole lowdown on long-term care insurance. Yeah, sure. Thanks for allowing me to come back on and share this information with you guys. Long-term care is a, it's a very important piece of the puzzle, if you will, of being able to prepare for this kind of disease and either other diseases or possibilities in the future. Long-term care is so important. I really did not realize it until we were having to go through this journey with my wife. But I guess the gist of long-term care is if you're ever having to go visit someone that's been in a skilled nursing facility or assisted living, those things are not always paid for by insurance or at least not in full. And so sometimes you have to have your own private insurance to take care of those costs. Um, the average long-term care stay, whether it's a, a skilled nursing facility or assisted living facility, can be $1,500 a week. That's pretty expensive from six, four to $6,000 or more per month. And the average person does not have that kind of money just sitting around that they can spend as much as we would like to. So there, there comes in place the long-term care private insurance, being able to have that. A lot of people, I think, probably understand the need more for life insurance than they do long-term care insurance. But long-term care insurance is just as important. And sometimes you can have long-term care built into your life insurance policy in a couple of ways. Some may be an actual long-term care rider, and there may be some other ways to be able to, to do that. So with long-term care, the ones that I've quoted, a lot of people kind of shrug their shoulders because of the expense of it. And the average cost without knowing all the factors that go into it, because it's really similar to a life insurance policy with underwriting between age, tobacco usage, even from where you live to health history, I uh, can determine the premium for that. But I want to say on average, we're probably looking about $140 a month to $300, maybe even more per month on average for the person it just depends on how much money they want to cover or be available to them. And I want to say at those quotes, that's going to be around that $4,000 a month range. So when we look at long-term care policies for folks, they really shrug because they see that as a pretty expensive cost for them. Unfortunately, that's actually relatively cheap compared to what they would get out of the policy if they have to use it. The unfortunate thing is that we have to buy that in order to get a good rate on that. You have to buy that when you're young. And so you're paying into it for a number of years before you ever have to use it. And so we see that as a true expense. But later on, when we do have to use it, it becomes an asset, if that makes sense. It's I, almost prepaying for, yes. for care, in a sense. The way you're describing it, it's almost knowing that this expense is likely to arise and making payments towards that, which it opens my mind up to looking into it. So yes, thanks for describing it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wasn't really on, on a script, but yeah, just as, as my brain is working and trying to figure out how I can relate this information without all the insurance jargon, 70% uh, sure. of Americans over the age of 65 are expected to need some form of long-term care, whether it's a skilled nursing facility, assisted living, or even home health care, whether that's being done by a family member. But let's be honest, if a family member is going to be doing the home health care for you, they still have their own jobs and their own families to be taken care of as well. They're going to be taking time off. So that gets really difficult. Or of course, having some sort of private duty care coming in, whether it's an actual nurse or CNA or someone else, some other service someone's got to be paying for that one way or the other. Um, now, here's the other neat thing. A lot of people may be relying on Medicare or Medicaid to pay for those things. And unfortunately, and this is the boat that we find ourselves into, I do Medicare. Medicare does not cover those things. They will for a very limited amount. They will pay for up to 100 days in a skilled nursing facility. The first 20 days are typically fully covered, but then days 20 from to 100 are going to be cost sharing 
So Medicare will pay for some, and then the beneficiary or the consumer will have to pay for some as well, up to days 100. So what happens after day 100? They'll basically have to be responsible for the full amount of the cost after day 100, unless they discharge, and then they've been discharged for at least 60 days. And then if they re-enter care on day 61, then it will count for a new benefit period. So that's the game you have to play sometimes with the insurance company. And Medicare will pay for some home health care. There are some certain conditions that apply to that. They have to be homebound. They cannot perform activities of daily living. You have to have the physician certification for it. So there are some qualifications for home health care under Medicare. And then Medicaid, Medicaid, you have it's going to be based on income and resources that's available. So that's another big factor. Not everyone will qualify for that. Some people will try to maneuver assets around to where they may qualify for Medicaid. But what they don't know is that there is a look back period for Medicaid. So depending on where you are, but on average, it's like a five-year look back period. So if you're trying to make moves now, you need to be looking 10 years or more in the future for those, be able to qualify for those those types of services. I'm trying to think about what else on Medicaid. I, as much as Medicaid is a great service to Medicare is good, but there at some point, there are those gaps. And that's where long-term care, long-term care just gives you options. So you can choose to go what facility you want to, or if you want to have services in home, it just gives you those options. And you don't have to worry about trying to finagle the insurance game around. So it's always nice to have that own private course there that you have set up. Yeah. And for people who haven't utilized their long-term insurance, and maybe they have it already, what does that look like? Do you know, is that something you would know what that looks like? Do you get a bill? And then you submit that to your insurance mm -hmm. and insurance reimburses you or how does that look? Do you have to yeah, choose sure. certain facilities or? Absolutely. So the way you can design long-term care policies in many ways. One, you can choose, is this long-term care policy going to be only used for certified or skilled nursing facilities? Or do you want to be able to use it for private and home health care? or for all of the above. And so depending on what you choose, I'm thinking the term is institutional facility, institutional plans. And so depending on what you choose will also determine the premium. A lot of the cheaper long-term care plans are just going to be for institutional facilities. So they are not good for private duty or home health care. However, to answer your question, as far as being able to choose facilities, depending on how the plan you designed or the plan that you picked out and what you can afford, gives you options to choose whatever facility you want. There's also, as far as reimbursement or, or they pay the facility, most of the time you can submit the claim to the long-term care company and they'll either pay you or send that money to the facility directly. So again, to answer your question, it just depends on how the policy is designed. There are lots of options on there, but you can design it in a way that's helpful. Just like life insurance or any other insurance policy, a lot of people don't know there's a lot of negotiating. So it's balancing the scale of what features and benefits you want versus how much you're willing to pay. So I was very fortunate to have long-term care insurance for my husband. And um, I, the only thing that really hurt about that was they would reimburse me. They didn't, the insurance we had, they wouldn't do the facility. And I had to prove how much I was paying because they won't pay you over what the facility is charging you. So I had to send like bills to them and I only had to do it once a quarter. So it wasn't like every time, but mm -hmm. they, they had a delay in payment. So I am the first had to come out a lot of money mm -hmm. and then I would get my reimbursement around the 10th. It was hard because I think I was paying like 6,000 a month for his mm -hmm. care. And I got reimbursed 4,000. I got lucky because my, I mean, I, I didn't get lucky. I wish they would have paid all of it, but they did pay 4,000. And that was all, I was capped out because I was paying over what my mm. benefit was just because he was in a pretty nice facility. But the one thing that I have a question about is I've looked into, because I do know how important long-term care is, it saved my life. It saved my house and my children and all of it. The one thing I did right having children at risk for HD I right away started looking at, of course, life insurances and things and long-term care. And when I looked at, this was years ago, my oldest is 21, almost 21. And she was pretty young when I looked. And th the one thing is I couldn't at that time find a long-term care insurance policy that would take children, not only children, the ones I found, they wouldn't take you if you were like 
under 24 years of age. Is that still that or has that changed? It's still, it's actually now it's, I want to say 45, 40 or 45, depending on the income company, on the insurance company. Yeah. The thing is about long-term care, and I don't want to I guess for sake of time, don't want to get into the weeds a lot, <laughs> but long-term care has an interesting history before that. And basically when it came out, it was the newest, latest, greatest thing. People bought it. And unfortunately, in just a long story short, the insurance companies did not properly rate it. And so when people started making claims, they didn't have enough money to pay those claims. So then the whole industry shut down or collapsed to where there's only a few companies still out there that how is properly underwriting the policies to be able to continue to afford those claims and also receive enough money to pay those claims, of course. And so with that being said, there is a minimum age that a lot of the companies have because they know that if someone's buying it at age 20, buying long-term care, sometimes it's kind of like a red flag. Do they know that something's going on that we don't know about? Yes, there there is still that factor. And unfortunately, that that affected us. For us getting long-term care, because we looked at long-term care for my wife, unfortunately, the rate was good. I want to say it was around 140 bucks for us, too, what we were looking at. However, she was too young, and by the time she was, I guess, old enough to buy the policy, she had already been diagnosed. So we were well on that. So that's a piece of the puzzle that we do not have ourselves. Yeah. It, yeah. It's hard. It's a hard policy to get. The only reason why we got it is we got a group policy through the sheriff's department because my husband was a, mm. was a deputy. So we got really lucky. They wouldn't have, he got that long-term care policy when he was 21 and we were paying $28 a month, but it was the sheriff's department, right? It's there. They expect that you're going to get injured. <laughs> yes. In some type of care. There might be something out there that I'm not aware of in, in a obscure company that I'm not I don't know their details for, but I want to say most of them, they're looking at minimum of 40 before they'll even look at you to apply. For children that are really young, I can't emphasize this enough. Child life insurance policies, max them out, get as much as you can, do the bells and whistles on them, but get the extra rider and things like that for them. That's the best bet until later on when we could get long-term care policy for them. But if nothing else, they've got this policy that's already been set up. This past couple of weeks, I've been working with the school system and been really talking to these group of teachers about child term life for their kids. Or not, not term life, but whole life. A lot of them will buy term life insurance, part of the group plan, really maybe a couple of dollars to cover their kids. But for just three or four more dollars more, they can get an actual whole life insurance policy for their wow. just made a lot of financial sense and just talking to them about doing that but yeah anyways, that's a no. lot of topic <laughs> that's perfect yeah that's perfect and i'm glad you actually that's a great way to close this this talk off is that a lot of people with hd probably aren't going to qualify like davin said because we're young people are young when they get diagnosed younger but he just said there is a solution and that's those long-term that's life insurance writers and where we talked about and go back to Two shows ago with Davin, and he will talk about this writer where you actually can take out, if you know your loved one has a year left to live, you can take off, take out part of the policy to pay for their care. I had that option too. I never utilized it, but I could take out like quite a bit of money for my husband's care. So there is that option. So I think that's- I would say maybe one other couple of resources that we can look at is along lines of life insurance. If long-term care is not a viable option, either because- someone's already been diagnosed or they're not old enough to get it and something has happened now. But a couple other things that someone could look at, it's not the best option, but it is an option. And that is, of course, as you mentioned with life insurance, there's an accelerated death benefit. There's also companies that do life insurance settlements. So basically they will buy your life insurance policy from you and give you a settlement offer. So they get the money when you die, they'll continue paying the premium, but they'll give you some money up front. So I like to say, it's not the best option. It's an option. Then there's also reverse mortgages. I'm not advocating any of these things. I'm just saying these are some other possible solutions out there that someone could look into, but just be careful and make sure to read the fine lines and work with the financial advisor about if these are the best options for you. So yeah, absolutely. All right. That's great. Thank you, Devin, for coming on. And I think that will 
do it for today. We are going to have Davin back on with us to talk about disability, which is probably the most important topic within our community next month. So thank you so much for coming on and talking about long-term care and other for us today. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel below and ring the bell for notifications when more videos like this come out. Till next time.